and so welcome for another episode of Mr. Badger Talks Twitter Scum. I'm here with an incredibly close friend of mine, Mr. Robert Smith. How are you, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's Raul, um, actually Raul, but... Are you Spanish? <laughs> we'll go with that, yeah, Mexican, strictly speaking, but yeah, Mexican, uh, Raul Smith. Um, yep, I'm well, how are you, Mr Badger? I'm all right, I've got hemorrhoids. I've had hemorrhoids, they're not very nice, they're not, is it internal or external? Uh, external, and they taste oh, disgusting. Yeah. That's for, I mean, Mr. Badger, I'll be honest, I did not know your gymnastics ability was that impressive, but, but I am impressed. Oh no, it's a twist and pull. Have you, you tried vlogging that? Yogurt. Have you tried vlogging that? Because I think, with the, how much the kids are eating each other's asses these days, to see someone doing it themselves, I mean, that's, that's really impressive. I should put it on the YouTube, shouldn't I? Millions of views, mate, millions of views. Do, do you think the kids would like looking at me, um... Me downstairs. Let's let's not get back into this, Mr. Badger. You know you know where that got you last time. That's uh, probably probably you don't want to. Maybe just make it eighteen plus, okay? Eighteen. Oh, no, I'm not interested. Anyway, so we're here today. You, you're going to be educating me on the history of the retarded people of Newcastle. Uh, I, I think I think um, uh, 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 first off, I think mentally ill is a more acceptable a more acceptable way of, of phrasing the word retarded. Uh, unless of course you're talking about pugs, uh, they are retarded dogs, and that is the end of it. And I don't know why white people use them as a symbol of status and that they're rich. It's fucking weird. You people need to stop. But um, 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 yes, I am going to teach you about the history of of the I would argue intelligent people of Newcastle. Newcastle are pugs. Not, 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 not quite. Pugs are retarded dogs that can't breathe properly. So, people from so, Newcastle are intelligent people that, that have perfectly fine respiratory systems. They just can't talk properly. Yeah, it, we, we, we talk slightly differently. I wouldn't say we can't talk properly. We can talk more than properly. It's just a particular accent. I'm sorry, mate. I didn't catch a fucking word of that. <laughs> I'm going to fucking call my agent and fire him after this. <laughs> No, so it's, it is, it's, it's the history of Newcastle. So, at what point did England let Newcastle join their isle? Um, well, you'd probably say it started uh, not too long after after Jesus, really. That was, you know, what was that, zero? It, you know, you got BC, you got AD, what do you call zero? Is that BD? AC? Is that where people dress up in rubber and punch each other? What is what? Uh, no, I think you're thinking uh, well, the B, when people dress in rubber. Oh shit! BDM and S. That's what you're thinking of. BDM and S. Yes. When Not Jesus any was sexual born. Torture. BDM and S. Sexual torture. No, 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 no. Uh, the year. The year Jesus was born. Is it just called zero? The start. I don't know. To be honest, I, I like Jesus though. What do you like about Jesus? I like he's a little baby boy. Again, not not with this, Mr. Badger. You've no, been in, in trouble no, he, he's innocent. He's the, the, the innocent, he's innocent of a baby he was born child. Two thousand and twenty years before you fucking came to the world, Mr. Badger. Yeah, I I I, I was I was born in I can't remember. I'm sixty-four. All I'm saying is, if his fucking parents were looking for a barn to stay in, and you were the fucking landlord of the barn they stayed in, the fucking Christmas story nativity play would have been a lot fucking different. Was there Dark not a badger shit. in the nativity? There actually was a badger in my nativity. Do you want to know why? Go on. Because when we was kids at our school, our school was so fucking Catholic that they didn't have any roles for the ethnic minority kids. <laughs> so they made the three ethnic minority kids a butterfly, a caterpillar, and a badger, respectively. And we used to have to just run in the back of every scene as wild animals. So I'm gone. So it, this, no, I'm, I'm not an expert on Christ and Christianity, but in a place in a Muslim country where people are very brown skinned, they decided there was no roles for ethnic people. 
One hundred percent, mate. One hundred percent. Nineties Northeast Britain was an interesting place. However, I will concede that back back then, I don't think, I don't think Jerusalem was a Muslim city then. The Crusades oh, hadn't quite happened. Back then, there was no brown people in Jerusalem. No, there probably were brown people. They're just probably brown Jews. Is that a thing? Brown Jews. I don't. That, you that can sounds have like brown. Jews. That sounds like some that. shit. Oh, brown juice. Um, <laughs> I've, yeah, I've, I've definitely had the brown juice before, and uh, the doctor gave me some special tablets. <laughs> That's what happens when you eat brown people's food, actually. You get brown juice coming out of your ass. Well, to be fair, yeah, I think... Well, are you are you, are you, a, are you a, a certain type of... Like, do, do you kill? Do I kill? You know what I mean. Did uh, you? Did you uh, were you involved? I mean, strictly speaking, I, I'm Hindu, right? So we don't, like, in our text, it doesn't, it's, the word Hindu means resistance to violence. But if you ought to look at everything going on in India right now, yeah, mate, fucking killing loads of people. Love to kill Muslims. Build fucking temples on mosques we have burnt down. That is the type of, ironically enough, copying Islamic extremism and fucking putting out our own brand, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a new world, mate, putting that shit on YouTube as well. But yeah, we kill, we kill like motherfuckers. Are you a religious person then? Very religious, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you strike me as a religious man, because you know you you've got a beard, and that's number one, isn't it? They've all got beards. <laughs> actually, I don't think there's a single holy man that is clean shaven, bar bar the Dalai Lama. That's that's a good point, but that's but because he, he had slaves. alopecia. He He's got alopecia. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, maybe that is the case. Maybe he's... I think, actually, do you know what? I did read somewhere. He is uh, slightly related to John Joe Shelby. They're cousins. It, but not only that, uh, I think there was a thing in the... I think it was the early 2000s where he got his tits out and they uh, shot it onto the side of Big Ben and FHM did it for him and then uh, he had a mental... No, no, it's Gail Porter. Sorry. It's, uh, I get them two mixed up all the time. I, I do as well, but I think that's because in the late 90s, I'm pretty, uh, I'm 100% sure I read a story that the Dalai Lama used to suck off Jim, John Burkow. John who? John Burkow. John and a cow? That's a John bull. Burkow, the, former speaker of, a cow. Uh, the former speaker of the uh, House of Commons, whose wife, I believe, maybe not Gail Porter, was put onto the side of the House of Commons stripped naked by FHM. Well, there you go. There's some uh, news that Mr. Badger didn't know. You're already educating me. So, uh, well done, Robin. So we're, we're, so, we're trying to learn about uh, the, the history of Newcastle. I think we've got like about five minutes before the end of this first section. <laughs> and we've got 2,000 years to go, mate. We've not gone past the year zero. <laughs> it's a long old fucking journey, this. I tell you what, in the next five minutes, let's try and get from the year zero to 2017. Go. Okay, so in the year zero, uh, uh, fucking, I don't know, we were just all mad fucking Celts, fucking just burning shit and fucking eating magic mushrooms and doing Celtic rituals and sacrificing goats. Uh, in the year 55 AD, uh, Hadrian invaded uh, Britain. And Adrian. Conquered Britannia. Hadrian, Rocky's wife. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, Rocky wanted to do it, but Rocky was blind, so he got his wife, Hadrian, to invade. Uh, she did very well, conquered all of England, uh, and then got to the Scottish borders. Um, uh, and in the words of Gavin Webster, uh, saw a bunch of fucking gingers in skirts and went, no, fuck this! Uh, and they built that big wall. Uh, and then when they built that big wall, they sort of set up a civilization called Pons Alias. What did they call the wall? Uh, Hadrian's Wall. Yeah. <laughs> the war long before Trump, but they called the city Pons Alias. That was the original name for Newcastle. Now, Pons Anus. Pons, yeah, we'll go with that. Fucking Pods Anus. Yeah. Pons Anus. Uh, very homophobic, the, the Roman Empire. Uh, yeah. Pons Anus. They set that up. Uh, Pons Anus, uh, right in the northeast. Uh, and interesting enough, um, the people they stationed there, to, because it's fucking miles away from Rome, would have taken ages to get there back in the day. Nobody fucking wanted to work with this cold 
sunless fucking area protecting against Scots that sometimes come, but most of the time aren't even fucking there. So they sent soldiers that they didn't really care about. So the main soldiers who actually occupied Newcastle to begin with, and the main soldiers who lived there uh, 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 were actually North African, Syrian, Moroccan, that sort of uh, uh, genetic. So the original inhabitants of Newcastle look more like me then, well, not fucking you, because obviously you had the accident and you look horrible. Like, ho- hor- like you look like what I expected Kane to look like when he took off his mask. But anyway, uh, uh, look less like white people. Uh, but interesting enough, again, I think particularly when you see sort of the way that, that, that we're discussing cultural affairs at the moment, uh, what, what was very interesting about that is what you have to bear in mind is back then in, in 55 AD, essentially what you have is people dark skinned and olive skinned like me brown skin civilization colonizing and trying to civilize barbarian pale brutes and i think that's a very very interesting uh, flip on particularly today's current events so you were like the that scene in uh, the film 300 where the persians come over and try and fight like, what was his name legolas or whatever it was <laughs> <laughs> Legolas of Sparta, yes. Uh, Le- Leonidas, I believe his name is. Yeah, I was uh, saying Also a famous chocolate brand in Belgium. Uh, but yes, essentially that, that was us in 55 AD. Uh, essentially you got Roman occupation. Through the years, um, you know, you get the Normans, the Anglo-Saxons. Uh, really, we sort of stick to our Celtic roots in certain senses. But then a real big change happened sort of around about seven, eight, nine hundred AD. You start getting Vikings sailing over. And because of the latitude, because of literally Finland is just directly across from Newcastle. Newcastle, Holy Island, Linda's Farm was one of the first places they hit. And as a result, sort of through about 900 to about the 1300s, you have the Vikings essentially occupying um, the north of England and kicking off against the civilized leftovers of the Roman Empire and the Anglo-Saxons. Uh, and this sort of goes on until lo- late on 1066, the, the Normans when essentially. Saying, Sorry, go. When you said Linda's Farm, is that called the Holy Island. Yes, that is called the Holy Island. Is that because people put things up each other's holes? <laughs> you know what? I would imagine so. There are about 300, if that, probably less people on Holy Island. And it's actually separated by a bridge that when the tide's out, you can't go over the bridge. Like if you try and drive over at the wrong time, your car will get knocked off the bridge by the sea. Uh, and when you're separated like that, you got a lot of time. What else are you going to do but put a fucking toy car up your sister's ass? So, hang on, but there was 300 people in that film and they didn't put toy cars up each other's asses. They probably did, they just probably didn't show you the scenes. Oh, I might Actually, to... famously enough, do you know that the Spartans bombed little boys? Oh. Did uh, you not know uh, this? How do you become a Spartan? Oh, it's long gone now. You can't be a Spartan now. But back then you were born in Sparta and it was so military organised that you'd have like a buddy. Everyone would have to do national service and pretty much would end up in the military. Most people end up in the military in Sparta. And so you'd have these older men who'd look after these young boys coming up, learning how to fight, 11, 12, and they'd be a father, a brother, a mentor to them. They'd also be a lover and they would rape them up the bum. It's, it's not rape if they want it. Um, do you know what? Back then, I can't even... I don't even know if the laws of consent would apply. That's fucking before Christ. He invented consent, as we all know. So back then, you're right. It's fucking consensual sex with 11-year-old boys. Which is a perfect way to take a break into the second section. And I will be using that. I am that. so glad live comedy's <laughs> never coming back. I'm never getting work after this shit. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, we're back for part two of Mr. Badger Talks to a Scum, and I'm here with my good friend, Ronnie Corbett. Uh, Ronnie, we, we were talking about um, the history of the retards of Newcastle, and you said that, uh, basically, back in the day, you had people, that they were like the army rejects, and they were the ones that you know didn't really want to go there, didn't want to do any work, which is a tradition that's carried on to this day. Uh, we, I think we we got ah! up. To, I think we got up to the Vikings had invaded each other's holy islands. Uh, where where do we go from there? Uh, after the Vikings, yeah, the Normans pretty much showed things up, uh, and particularly we were we were still had quite a lot of Viking influence, and you still see some of that today. For example, uh, we don't say go home, we say gan yem. Uh, if you go to Denmark. 
going home in Danish is ganjem. Uh, also, instead of saying, uh, uh, we use the word raj. Uh, and nobody really knows where it comes from, but I have a hunch that it comes from the word rage. Uh, it's just essentially a hardened version of that, a more Viking or Danish sort of way of saying rage. And it's just there uh, sort of stayed. And it, it's also very prevalent in Scotland, which obviously has a lot of Viking influence. But the kings after through like 1066 to the 1500s managed to, well, to the 12th, 1300s, I'd say, at the absolute latest, managed to shore things up by sending up a guy called Bede uh, and also King Ecbert there as well who like managed to spread Christianity through the Northeast and actually King Ecbert who was the king of Northumbria in I think about seven, eight, nine hundred again one of those sort of centuries he was responsible for actually turning Europe into a Christian continent um, a really really big impact uh, I think that he also advised Charlemagne on how to uh, spread Christianity throughout Europe and to maintain his power in Are France are they the people that make toilet paper? It was Charlemagne. Yeah. No, 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 no. They're the people who make champagne. I thought it was sh- 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 Charlemagne. Legion. Otherwise, it's just sparkling Charlemagne. Oh, I see. Okay. Sparkling wine, sorry. <laughs> sparkling Charlemagne. <laughs> sparkling Charlemagne. That sounds like a stripper. <laughs> that does, that is, that is. I actually met a girl once who was a stripper. Uh, and she was trying to chat me up because I, it was a long story. I usually don't get chatted up by strippers. I've done a very good gig uh, and she cracked me up. This is the one time I've done a gig and someone's come up to me and, and made me laugh. Uh, she went, oh, hey, I really like your set. My name's Crystal. Like the meth. And I was just like... uh, you might find this surprising, but uh, I've never had a woman attempt to chat me up after a gig. Um, yeah, that's a uh, big... A big maybe I'm imagine most women will see you and then recognize you from the papers and go, I'm probably a bit old for him. Yeah, well, even in the papers now, they've got a gag in order, they can't talk about the, the accusations, you know, they can only talk about facts like that kid that was found dead in the wood near me caravan. <laughs> <laughs> Her ass looked like that before you... I even met her, you know. It, she, that's why she was in a wheelchair. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I thought that was because she, you know, was a big fan of Alton Towers. Yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, I don't think there's a ride in Alton Towers that splits your anus. So uh, it fucking is, mate. I don't, I don't know if you've been reading the papers the past few years, but there's definitely fucking a ride that will split a few things off from you, not just your anus. I don't know what ride you've been on Alton Towers, Alton Towers, but. Uh, I think you may have met a homosexual employee that took a fancy into you. And just went, yes, mate, it's a ride. Sit on this. Give me a quid. <laughs> it was a ride, mate. I was shaking and vibrating the whole fucking way. Uh, and I did scream because I wanted to go faster. So yeah. Yeah, it was a ride as far as you'd define it. Ah, well, you're a very liberated man, Re- Reginald. At this point, you sort of get to the... the... 12, 13, 1400s, um, and the 1500s and the 1600s are really when your castle starts to I lose interest at 16, I'm afraid. Sorry? I lose interest at 16. That's the, uh, that's the cutoff, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, in fairness, but in these 1600s, I think you would have been, uh, you would have quite liked it because men of your age would often marry 9, 10, 11 year old girls back then and it was seen as perfectly normal so you know this is probably uh, oh. really i mean this is when you should have been born mr budget no, you know? I, I i wouldn't want to lock it down you know i'd want it to, to roam free ah okay in fairness in the 1600s being a playboy was quite frowned upon being a bit of a uh, you know a lothario with the children uh, wasn't quite as it except you had to pick one and you <laughs> settled and you stuck with that one uh, <laughs> didn't, God. not so- big then polyamory not so big the only back then was being a playboy with the children frowned upon. <laughs> that monogamous rape was allowed, so you know. <laughs> right then. It's like now, you know, now, so long as you marry them, it's fine. That's the. Um, that's uh, in the... certain. You know what? Yeah. In some countries, I um, probably shouldn't say this with a smile on my face, saying this is going on to YouTube, but in some countries, that's the law. As long as uh, you marry them, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, what, what was the thing in America, the one with the abducted in plain sight, where the girl's allowed to marry at 12? And then the guy ended up, like, fucking all of the family. Like, he got a hand job off the dad, the mum, the uncle, the second cousin, the dog, that that one. 
Yeah. The age for sexual consent in Japan is 13. I think but, in, it's, uh, I, I forget which African country, but there's one where it's 11. And again, it's it's okay, so long as you marry them afterwards. Uh, and yeah, and it's, it's just a real shame for you, because I mean, if, if, if you were attracted to black or Japanese women, or girls, should I say, I mean, you'd be having a field day. That's why you'd be moving straight away, but you... You know, it's, it's not to your taste, is it? That's well, a shame, I think. I'll be honest with you. There was a, a, a druggy heyday back in the late 1980s where I may have visited Japan for quite a while. And I think that's why my penis now shoots maggots out the end, you know. It, uh... <laughs> then were the days! You can't do anything nowadays, can you? Although, it's uh, pretty easy to do in uh, Cuba. Cuba, if you, if you want to do the paedophilia, go Cuba. A uh, couple of other South Asian countries, or East Asian countries, I think it's acceptable in. Sex to, tourism, that's what they call it, innit? You'll have to uh, send me the, the locations via DM for research. Oh, mate, I don't have the list, and I'm not fucking, I will, I'm not getting wrapped into this. I'll be fucking turned into you tree myself. I'm just trying to advise uh, for the record, for the law. I'm just trying to make conversation with a colleague on a comedy podcast. I am in no way... Uh, advising or, 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 or giving him information on where to rape children. I'm just imagining the headlines tomorrow. Asian man with list of <laughs> pedophile countries. <laughs> Asian comedian recommends countries to fuck children into badger. Oh. That's, uh, that'd be probably still the most... Uh, probably not the most wild headline of 2020. Probably the second most wild. <laughs> We've got the 1500s, the 1600s, uh, and in the 1600s, something very interesting happens. Uh, actually, the, we, we start to get a reputation as a fucking hard nut. Uh, and the reason that is, is because uh, in 1644, the English Civil War kicks off, the first one. <clears throat> and in that first Civil War, um, two things happen. One, on the Battle of Marston Moor, which changed the fate of the, the Civil War. It was initially in the hands of the Royalists, the Royalists were winning. But then Marston Moor happened and the parliamentarians suddenly were winning. And this is because they acquired help from a huge Scottish army that while they weren't supporters of the English parliamentarians, as Scotland still is not today, they were very, very supportive of just trying to get rid of this fucking annoying king. And so, you know, it's sort of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And at the Battle of Marston Moor, 3,000 Geordies, uh, in true to our name fashion, we arrived late to the battle. And the reason we arrived late is because we were at a previous battle, the Siege of York. And then when that ended, instead of like, you know, getting ready for the next battle, which you should do in a long campaign of war, what we did, the Newcastle Whitecoats, is we went and robbed all the shit that the soldiers left, the parliamentarian soldiers left. We went out looting and went burgling. And we spent so, and because the fog was so bad, because back then you don't have mobile phones, very good connected, you know, ways of communicating. We went robbing. And then well, by the time that like the people at York realized that Marston Moor was about to happen, they had to leave without the Newcastle troops because they couldn't find them because we were so in the midst of our robbing. We turned up to this battle late because we've been doing robbing. And back then they thought death before dishonor. We've been fucking caught out here. We've been robbing. We've showed up late to the battle and now we're losing and that's partially our fault. So what these 3,000 Geordies did, even as the battle was lost, even as Royalist soldiers were running away left, right and centre, is they just fucking charged into battle. And 3,000 of them stayed and held that battle on. Everyone else left. Everyone else fucking ran away. But the parliamentarians fucking gave them so many chances to surrender. We're like, please, we didn't, like, there's no need to fucking all die. We've won this battle. What are you fucking doing? What is wrong with you? You insane motherfuckers, please leave. And they were like, nope, we will die for our king. And to the last man, they died. 3,000 against 20,000. They fought and they fought and they fought. That happened as well as the siege of Newcastle, where part of that Scottish army that had come down, same few months, they went and sieged Newcastle. They did so with the help of, of the village of Sunderland. Uh, they crossed the Tyne and that allowed them to surround Newcastle and bombard the walls. Uh, uh, and that, uh, the mayor of the city at the time really fucking fought his cause. Uh, basically, we just did not surrender again there. We fought, there were no soldiers there. All the soldiers were at Marston Moor. This was literally about 100 soldiers versus about 5,000 Scots firing catapults into fucking Newcastle, defending the city for the life of them in the name of the king. At one point, the Scottish general, the Earl of Leven, he threatened to blow up 
the, the, the spire of St. Nicholas's Church, which is still there today. It's outside Top Top and opposite Flares. It's right next to a back alley where everybody goes when they need a piss or they want to finger someone and they ain't got a house to go. Right? It's that fucking church. It's still there. And essentially what happened was, 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 was uh, uh, this Earl of Leaven from Scotland, he said, I'm going to blow up the church spire unless you fuckers surrender. So the mayor, a man by the name of, I believe, John Marley, no relation to Bob, what he did very intelligently was is he got all of the Scottish prisoners he currently had, put them in the top of the spire, and then went on the walls and announced to the Earl of Leaven what he'd done. So the Earl of Leaven couldn't fucking blow up the church, and the church still stands there today. Uh, eventually, though, with the numbers, we were fucking routed, man. And to the point where there was only six people left in our army, and they went into the church, and that was the only that, that was eventually when they decided to surrender. And there's still a statue of John Marley on Northumberland Street today. We've got a really good reputation when it comes to slaves. We're probably one of the cities that did it well. Because, I, I mean, the thing is, when you're in Britain at that time in the 17, 18, 1900s, it's quite hard not to engage in life unless you fucking sit on your own and not in any way somehow profit from slavery. If you were in any way involved in tobacco, sugar, or heating your home or trade of any kind, you would have in some way indirectly funded slavery. That's impossible, Mr. Badger, for me and you to think of as we record a, a podcast on equipment purchased from Amazon in Primark clothes. We cannot really think about how engaging with capitalist systems means we indirectly fund slavery. But uh, back then, lots of people did, but Newcastle really stepped out of the mold and really fought against it. Uh, and this was shown twofold. Number one, through the, the, the foreign secretary uh, at the time, who ended slavery at the behest of William Wilberforce, was uh, Earl Grey, who is the man on top of the statue at Monument. So that really baffled me. He's the guy from the T as well. But that really baffled me when you got Black Lives Matter protesters and statue defenders having a fight around Monument when the guy they're all fighting over literally ended slavery. Furthermore, um, Frederick Douglass, I don't think you might know his name, but he is very famous in America. If you go to any city in America, there's a Frederick Douglass Street. Douglass with two S's. Uh, he was the Martin Luther King before Martin Luther King. During slave times, this man, he was a runaway slave. He broke away from a slave farm. He was taught to read and write at a young age by one of his master's wives. And he was so intellectual, he was so articulate, he was so inspiring that when he did talks about abolition in America, even slave owners themselves, Americans who were very in favor of slavery, would say, no, 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 I refuse to believe that this man is black. And they would admit that if this man is black, that this proves that everything the South and the Confederacy are doing is actually fundamentally and morally incorrect because black people have the same ability to be as intelligent as uh, white people. That's how well spoken this guy was. He would make fucking slave owners shake in their boot and morally just re-question everything they'd done. But he was still a slave. He was still a runaway slave. He wasn't actually allowed to do these speeches. Everything he was doing by the letter of the law was illegal. Now, what runaway slaves did back then, because if they got caught, and particularly in the South, um, it's a sort of a similar story to 12 Years a Slave, because they might end up back in chains what they do is they go to europe and they'd start doing talks in ireland england the rest of europe france spain about how slavery is terrible and about how european powers should help end it and it's anti-christian and it's anti-enlightenment and it's anti-progressive and all this kind of stuff so he goes to he goes to ireland and then he goes to the uk and he comes to newcastle and he did a speech to a sold out crowd that were very supportive. This crowd was so supportive that two Mormon sisters, about 10 minutes up the road, they actually purchased his freedom and made sure he was no longer a slave. He was a free man because of two Geordies. And they then <laughs> sent him back to America where he continued to do his talks and without shadow of a pond doubt, had an immense influence in ending transatlantic slavery and starting the civil war. He was on talking terms with Abraham Lincoln. So what you've just taught me is it's okay to buy a black man. They bought his contract, is what you're saying. Essentially, yes, and then let him free. Like sort of what Harry Potter does with Dobby when he gives him the sock. I, I, well, he wouldn't want to give him my sock. <laughs> I have no doubt. I don't even have the war socks back then. They're probably tight. Yeah, probably, well, mine, mine would be very tight. I have a ridiculously large penis, but mainly due to the infections. So, we've, we've massively run over. I think we're going to have to turn this into a three or maybe even a four-parter. We're all right to have another quick break. That's uh, not a problem whatsoever. 
Right, well, I'll see you in part three then. William Wells Brown, another very famous runaway slave, similar guy. Um, he also said, he's quoted as saying, that the closest friend to the abolition movement outside of America is without shadow of a pond out the city of Newcastle upon Tyne. Uh, now this obviously happened, I think, late 1800s, maybe early, no, it would have been late, early 1800s. Um, but in the just for the people just joining us, we've literally been chatting for about an hour and we've only just got up to the 1800s. This is part three of Mr. Badger Talks to a Discum. And I'm here with Reginald Perrin. Uh, Reggie, (laughs) fucking hell, where where are we at now, mate? Reggie Yates. Um, So in the, we were just talking about Frederick Douglass, he was uh, early 1800s. Around about the same time, uh, 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 George Stevenson was born. Do you know who he is, Mr. Badger? Yes, he was in the Beatles. Um, no, 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 no. He was not in the Beatles. He fucking uh, he was. He invented the tri- I don't think he was. Is you he not the one draw- who's dead? Sorry? Is he not one of the ones who's dead? No, that's John Lennon. That's John Lennon uh, uh, and George Harrison you're thinking of. But George Stevenson invented the train. Uh, he basically designed the train, invented it, and probably got one of the first working models. Is that uh, where a lot of a lot of men take it in turns to have sex with one lady? Yes, he invented that. He also invented Bukaki, uh, another one of his uh, uh, very valuable inventions. Now, uh, both inventions that helped us transport coal around the country, that helped start a national football league, which Bobby Robson even mentions in his autobiography. Uh, Bobby Bob. For the advent of the train, uh, and he also uh, sorry, Bobby Babdam. Bobby Bobson, Bob, Bobby Bobbinson, yes, Bobby, Bob, Bob, Robert, Bob. Bobby. Uh, but, but he invented the train, uh, and from all those men having sex but, with Bob, one woman, he, he Bob, managed. Bobby Robin, Bobby Robert Bobs invented Bobby the Bobson. train. Bobby, Bobby Bobson, that's his name, technically speaking. No, Robert Robson, Robert Robson is his name, technically speaking. And, but he, and invented he invented the train. The train. And, uh, and that allowed us, no, no, that's George Stevenson. He invented the train, oh. and that allowed us to conquer India. So that's probably what brought me here, really, at the end of the day. Uh, so, but... but George Stevenson made the train. Bobby Bobbitson was the bass player for the Beatles. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. Bobby Bobbitson was the bass player for the Beatles. Uh, but nonetheless, he invented the train. And then from there, oh. nothing much happens. You know, in the, the, the 1850s to 1900s, the Northeast is a bit of a coal mining hub, makes a lot of money. From that and from shipbuilding, as it always has done for the past few centuries, continues to. The next real sort of significant thing is probably in the early 1900s. Uh, Joyce and John Astley were born, uh, and John uh, Astley uh, and Joyce Astley were childhood sweethearts. But then they, uh, uh, the war happened. World War Two happened. Uh, John had to go fight uh, in Morocco, Greece, uh, Libya. Uh, and then he ended up on the beaches of Dunkirk and, and sailed back with the ships, one of the lucky survivors, while Joyce Astley made the, the tanks in Catterick. Uh, 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 then when the war ended, uh, John actually found himself, they'd, they'd split up, they'd not really talk for ages because of the war, and John found himself uh, a girlfriend, actually. Uh, he'd, he'd seen a girl in France, he claimed she was a duchess, and one day he was cycling back to uh, South Shields to get the ferry to Dover and he was going to go meet his Duchess French girlfriend but he bumped into Joyce's dad and he said oh good to see you back from the war John no injuries uh, way on your way and he said oh I'm cycling the ferry I'm going to go see my, my Duchess girlfriend I met her while I was I was in France and Joyce's dad said oh well that's nice but uh, Joyce is back from Catterick if you want to go see her John turned his, his, his bike round and he went and met Joyce's childhood sweetheart and then they got married. I'll get back to that because the war ends and then from the 50s, 60s, something very interesting happens where we discovered the greatest guitarist that ever lived. Jimmy Um, Nail. You mean Jimmy Nail? Yes, Crocodile Shoes, that's the man. And no, he is one of ours, uh, as is the lead singer of the 1975, as uh, Jimmy Nail's compatriot, Brendan Healy, Dennis in our Feeders Own Pet. His son uh, is is, is the lead singer of the 1975. We've also got... 
Dan Fender. So we're killing the charts right now. Nonetheless, Jimi Hendrix is actually the guy we found in the 70s. Um, he did an audition. He was recognized by, I think, the drummer of the Animals, who were in Newcastle band, also quite a famous rock and roll band. They really, really liked him. Uh, and they basically had him bosk on Chili Road and do social clubs around Newcastle in the North and down London. And one day, they were actually represented by like one of the biggest gangsters in the North East. And one day, Jimi Hendrix got fucked up with these other gangsters, and then they kidnapped him and tried to kidnap him for a ransom. And then the fucking godfather of Newcastle went to these gangsters' house, fucked them all up, maybe killed them, I don't know. Got Jimmy, who was fucking coked up or heroined up, I think at the time, out the bath, took him to the gig, forced him to play. And then from the 60s, as well as discovering Jimi Hendrix, something else happened. Um, 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 um. <sighs> my granddad moved to this country, my mum's father, who was a British soldier. Jimmy uh, Nail. Jimmy Nail, yes, Jimmy Nail. And he fought uh, uh, in Singapore and then he was retired. He was given honourable discharge and citizenship in the UK and he took my mum with him. Uh, and then around about the late 1970s, I'd say, maybe early 1970s, um, my dad moved to this country to drive the buses, like Sadiq Khan and Sajid Javid's dad. Uh, and then he met my mother. Uh, and then at this point, when they were pregnant with my older brother uh, and they needed someone to look after my sister, they bumped into Joyce and John Astley. Uh, who then became, over time, my adopted grandparents. And that's where I, we all fit into this lovely history of Newcastle. Uh, around about the same time, just just after in the 80s, uh, a TV show called Our Feeders Ain't Pet came out, which, uh, Jimmy Nail uh, and, oh. and Brendan in the 2010s came a TV show called Geordie Shaw, which entirely flipped the perception of Geordies on their head. We went from being fat coal mine work in pie eating tattoo on my belly bastards to very fucking handsome chest waxed permatanned people to the point where i had to then explain to people who meet us outside in your castle that this was genuine indian heritage and not flawless fake tan you can't get this in the shops uh, and then after that we destroyed the universe because what happened was was those Jimmy bastards Nail. nope jimmy nail jimmy nail switched on the large hadron collider in Switzerland, and the Large Had Large Hadron Collider is some believe is what was when the when that was switched on. That was when the universe started fucking up. I had um, a, 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 a thought, thought about the Hadron Collider. Is Go it, on. It's in Switzerland, isn't it? Yes, it is. Do you reckon it's powered by the souls of the old people that go to Dignitas? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hope so. It is It is like the God particle, isn't it? It is some sort of like metaphysical, super spiritual. So probably it could be, you never know, powered by our ancestors. But anyway, they switched that on in October 2008. And some people regard that as when the world started fucking up. Not long after, you know, we had a, 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 the Arab Spring, which led to the Syrian war. There was the Brexit, Trump, all these kinds of things. Uh, and people often argue that it's, it's fucked up the universe. By switching that on, we've turned something in the universe which has screwed everything up. Uh, and the Large Hadron Collider would not have been possible to build without the Higgs boson particle, which was discovered by Peter Higgs, uh, which is the God particle. That is the particle upon which all matter, I believe, is based. Uh, and Peter Higgs is a fucking Geordie. Lives 10 minutes up the road, was from Cragside War Kid, and he disco we discovered the God particle. We introduced Christianity to Europe. We built a wall before Donald Trump. We discovered the greatest guitarist that ever lived. And on top of that, we had an enormous contribution to ending transatlantic slavery. And yet the only thing you fucking remember us for is Jimmy fucking Nair. What the fuck? Who was also, interesting enough, a football hooligan once upon a time. I've got seven toes. What happened to the other three, Mr. Badger? Oh, no, I'm one foot. <laughs> How did you get to it? Um, there's a, a Bollywood star that has six fingers called Ritik Groshan, and he's very successful. So, you know, if you maybe, you know, a career in Bollywood is awaiting you. And they're I, fine I, with your fucking children over there. I was going to say, I, I did try and get into to Bollywood, but uh, my political beliefs held me back. Um... Which beliefs in particular? Because in India right now, I mean, they really don't like Muslims, so I think it could fit in quite well there. Oh, so that, that's happening now? Yeah, 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 try, I'd give it another go, mate. Give it another go. Mr. Vandy's coming fail, back! Then try and fail again? I can't dance, though. I've got bad hips. Will I still be uh, all right? 
you, you can get her back in. They usually have like, you know, stunt dancers essentially. Stunt dancers. Well, stunt that's dancers nice. and stunt singers. I've got a career then. So, so yeah, that, thanks to you, I've, I've learned a lot about Newcastle from the the dawn of man. Through to Geordie fucking Shaw. <laughs> dawn of written history, not the dawn of man. I can't tell you what was happening. All I know is that once upon a time, we were actually connected by a land bridge to Finland, um, but through, it was called Doggerland, but it sank. Dogging land? Dog, dogging land, mate. That's what they used to do. Oh. Just Finnish people and fucking Geordies bumming each other on horses because we didn't have cars then. But then it, it sunk underwater through like Pangea or the fucking earth moving around and shit. Well, that was... <laughs> That's an additional fact for Mr. Badger. So That's right, the dawn of man. This has been the first actual factual bod- podcast I've uh, managed to do. Normally, people haven't got a fucking clue about their subjects. So I'm quite... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Quite yeah. <laughs> Have I ruined it with, with my knowledge and my facts and my history? I've, I've had someone who chose... <laughs> so that, that was an interesting half an hour. So... Nope, I- Know my people, man. I know my people. But this season, I've been, I'm, I'm tentatively excited, and he's, he spent some cash as Ash. I don't know why. I think maybe, I don't know. Maybe he's gone for a legal battle with the Premier League. Maybe he's, he wants to. Uh, oh yes, and the club was founded, of course, in 1892 uh, as a merger between Newcastle East End and West End. Probably one of the only Uniteds in the country that is actually United. Uh, I give Leeds their due. Leeds are United as well, uh, but Manchester fucking aren't. So I don't know why the fuck they call themselves that. Um, but your city should be United if your, your football club is. But nonetheless, off that slightly pedantic rant, uh, yeah, he 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 spent the cash this season, uh, 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 and I like the squad we've got. And um, you know, I think Brucey people who give him grief for his tactical news I think one thing Brucey has which a lot of even some of the greater managers of yesteryear are starting to not realise is that the game is changing time is moving on and every year things change exponentially and these kids uh, they're a lot softer they're a lot more privileged they live their lives not being raped by people like you so they don't understand that the world is a harsh place and they've been told as well that they're you know they're, they're good people like they've been told not that they're good people they've been told that they're you know millionaires and they're going to rule the world and this that and the other and they've got an immense entitlement and to massage and manage those egos it takes a soft touch it takes more carrot yes. than stick the less said about that the better because i don't want to get cancelled anyway <laughs> so, but you seem to know quite a bit about history in general there robin <laughs> uh yes yes yeah i do i very much love his i think it's a wonderful thing i think the human story from the dawn of man from 70,000 years ago whatever I think it's actually when you actually look at history I think it's one of the things that even in a pandemic such as this can reinforce your faith in what we're doing here and, and make us realize that this is worth something because the fact that we're not all trying to stab each other right now is for me nothing short of a miracle are you doing anything history related at the moment I have a podcast on BBC sounds what it's not what, a, what a lovely link Yes, uh, it's not been promoted the best, but I think it's a very good podcast. It's about Hinduism and what Hinduism actually is. I grew up as a Hindu, but I knew nothing about the religion. It is one of the most popular religions in the world. It's got as many followers as uh, Islam and Christianity. They are the top three. And yet we all know about Christianity. We all know about Jesus, Adam and Eve, and Noah and the Ark. We were all taught that in school. But we also know about, uh, we know a lot about Islam, which was one of the uh, unintended positive side effects of 9-11. We all know about Allah. We all know about uh, Muhammad. We all know about certain stories. We all know that Jesus was in the Quran. But we know nothing about Hinduism past the fact that Hindus sort of treat the cow as a holy animal and that they they have an elephant god apart from that we literally know nothing we know nothing of the tenants we know nothing of, of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable within hinduism and this was my journey to try and figure it all out uh, it's a mixture of stand-up sketches and interviews with a hindu priest sindhu v is on there uh, shukola is on there and it's, it's it's really good i really recommend any listeners check it out it's probably the thing i am the most proud about and that's bbc sound and what's it called again comic sanskrit Comic Sanskrit. That's the one. Yeah, I think you pronounced that pretty perfect. Oh, fantastic. I don't know what the fuck it means, but I've said it. It's a pun. It's a... So Sanskrit is the ancient language, like Latin to Hindi. I thought I thought Sanskrit was what you get if you've sat on the beach for too long and it's gone off. 
So have, have you got anything else you want people to follow you on or anything? Obviously, with live stand-up now being declared by our Chancellor, the fellow Hindu Rishi Sunak, as unviable, um, the things I'm promoting now uh, is my online content, man. Follow me on YouTube. I beg you, please, honestly, please subscribe to my YouTube. I'm putting out videos every day. I'm actually this week putting out a special called Newcastle Brown Tales that features the one, the only Paul Gascoigne. I even do Raul Moat jokes to him. There's crowd work with him. It's one of the funniest things you will ever fucking see. I'm going to release it on Vimeo as well for a pound if you perhaps don't want to get in the habit of paying me two pound a month for my shit. But um, that's pretty much that's it. And then just my socials, man. Instagram, Raul Coley Comic. Uh, Facebook, Raul Coley Comic, Twitter, Raul Coley Comic. If you really were impressed by my short history of Newcastle, you think this guy, I want to see more of what he does. I want to see what he, because I've got to, I'm going to make everything I've just told you into a YouTube series called Geordie Law and put that on YouTube. So if you want to see that, subscribe to YouTube. But, but please subscribe to my Patreon. I've got about five followers at the minute. I make about £30, £20 a month off it. But if I can get some more people on there and make this an income and you can fund me doing this shit, if you like this sort of stuff, You'll see loads more of it uh, if you can help fund me. Make more. It's £2 a month. That's less than the price of an espresso. And you get a fucking shitload of content. And really good stuff, in my personal opinion. Well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. What was your name again? Robin. Robin Armstrong. Robin Armstrong. So follow Robin Armstrong on Twitter, on the YouTube, on Face. Are you sure that's your name? Raul Coley comic. Raul Coley. Raul Coley comic. R A U L. Which sounds like a disease. Uh, <laughs> so if you follow, the name will be on the pod, on this podcast anyway. But yeah, follow him. He's a lovely man. And uh, thank you very much for coming on. And hopefully we'll have you back on again soon to talk about something else. Perfect, man. I look forward to it. All right. Say bye bye to the boys and girls. Bye, my age in the morning. See you later. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>